Good morning. Welcome to Holy Spirit and to you online as well. We're glad to have you with us. You can find the bulletin for your use online just below the YouTube screen. So please uh, take a look for that and join in as you are able. We acknowledge that our worship is taking place in the Aboriginal territories of the Salish and Kalispell people. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though our own power or piety that we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors hath glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him, but you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name and his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers, in this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. 
Our response to the first reading is Psalm 4, which is found in the service leaflet. Please pray it with me. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep. For only for you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we, what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawless, lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who dis does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Well, in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. We continue to hear the stories of Jesus being revealed, and our collect for the day emphasizes Jesus self-revealing, uh, re revealing, self-revealing. I want to focus on that because for us to do what Jesus is asking us to do, we better get comfortable with sharing our own stories. Now, most of us do it all the time, and we don't think about it. We just do it. But if you were to pause for a minute and reflect on how you specifically get to know others and share your story, you might be able to see certain fingerprints or marks on it that make it unique to you. Why do I think it's so important that we understand how we share our own stories? If you're going to share anything about your life, you want to know who you're sharing it with, right? Because we don't just dive into the deepest depths of who we are with anyone. Certainly not at the beginning when you're getting to know someone. You're trying to give just enough to get started with, okay, there's a relationship here. And then you might actually think about, how do I encourage going further? We do it unconsciously once we start to get to know someone. Perhaps that person shares something in common with us. Okay, that opens up some doors right there. You like fishing? Great. Let's talk fishing. Uh, you came from such and such a state, Pennsylvania. Great. I have relatives there. It just starts to unfold, right? If you find enough things in common, you might actually begin to develop some trust. 
with someone. And if you carry that conversation forward over a period of time, you might actually share something of great value to you with that other person. In every case today, as we read the scriptures, you need to kind of understand the context. The one that's coming out of Acts, the individual sharing is talking about <coughs> Jesus and what happened to Jesus. He's talking as an Israelite to Israelites. He's a little more bold in how he speaks because he knows them. If he did that with just anyone, he might actually lose his listeners. And in the gospel, there's Jesus with his disciples, who he's been with his whole time on earth. They know him better than anyone. And he's still trying to help them to understand. So, he asks for a piece of fish. A little fish would do fine. Sharing a meal, very good way to begin to get to know someone else. Now you can imagine the disciple that maybe was the one who gave the fish, that that, that passage, it says they were in joy. At the same time, they were wondering and disbelieving. <laughs> like, here's your fish. <laughs> But isn't that how it is? When someone isn't sure about who you are, there's hesitancy, right? Or maybe they want to know you, or they think they know you, but they're not sure yet. We all go through this. It just depends on the context, what's going on with the individuals. Jesus wants to get the message through to his disciples that yes, indeed, I'm alive. Yes, indeed, what's written in the scriptures reflects on me, that fulfillment that we hear about in scripture. He also wants them to get the message. The message is help people with repentance, and help them with forgiveness. Notice there isn't anything in there that says they must believe in Jesus Christ in a certain way, that they must have that statement before things begin to happen. Uh -uh. How in the world do we help people know that they're forgiven if they'll just ask? I had someone come in and talk to me this week who spoke for probably 40 minutes about a whole bunch of different things and out of the blue mentioned, am I going to be okay with God? Now, that was the point of the visit. The chit-chat and all that came before it was the, can I trust you? Is this going to be okay? Because he wanted to ask it, and he knew time was going to run out. It gave me an opportunity to reassure him, to tell him of the love of God, and to not just recite some specific way that it happens, but to help him from his own story knit some of this together to see God already present where he didn't think God could be. It's as simple as that. What gets in our way, just like it gets in the way of the disciples when they're looking at Jesus, is what we think we already know. Or the wounds that we have from the past. Ooh, I tried that once before, and that was not easy. I'm not going that way. Or you put your defenses up if you hear certain words coming at you. Uh-oh, this must be, and you just assume all kinds of things about someone's story. 
What I'm asking you to do today is to say the most important thing when you go to share about the love of Christ or the forgiveness or the joy, any of those things, most importantly, you might say respect the dignity of every human being and listen to them. Listen to what may make very little sense as it begins. Listen to them tell you the beginnings of their story. Let them in a little bit so they can let you in and discover what God is doing in every relationship God is in the midst doing. Whether we recognize it or not, that's a question. But God is present. Whether out in the woods having a conversation, in here having a conversation, in your workplace, whatever. And the conversation may be about something very different when it starts. And at some point, if someone trusts you enough, they ask a question that's of a deeper meaning or that might find out if you share something in common with them. Right? We've experienced these things. Jesus is essentially doing the same thing. This is who I am. And every time he encounters different people, he does it a different way. Isn't that true of us? We share our stories with different people in different ways. But wouldn't it be nice if you took a moment to reflect on your own story? The good parts, the painful parts, all of it. Because you are automatically sifting through all of that story when you're getting to know someone and you're pulling out certain parts. And part of our story is the impact and the formation of prayers together, of having broken bread together, of singing together, another form of prayer, of reading and hearing scripture, which causes us to what? Ask questions or feel affirmation or sense an emotion we didn't know was right there near the surface. Oh my, I can relate to that particular scripture. Oh my, that song is, is really touching me. Why is that? We just do these things, but we don't kind of have that brief conversation or reflection. So I invite you to do that this week. Spend some time reflecting on what your story is. Tell your story to yourself if you want. What's important to you? What do you hold back for a while? And what comes out first? You know which things tend to connect with people right away because you've experienced that. And you know which things you don't want to risk with somebody you barely know. But as you share your stories, the relationship begins to build. And more and more of each other's stories come out. And part of our story is the love of God, the forgiveness of God. I can't tell my story without sharing what I've experienced about God's forgiveness. It's had a huge impact. So there's avenues that will come to you based on your story. There's no one way to do it. I'm sitting down to have something like a cup of coffee or an opportunity to share a meal is one of the best ways for any of us to sit down and be present to one another and see what happens. Jesus did so with the disciples, and we are invited to do the same. 
Amen. Please stand. Let us join together in saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one. Prayers of the people are guided by Form 3, found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer and in the service leaflet. Please pray them with me. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. In such love and peace, we pray to you, Lord God. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. As the family you have called us to be, Lord, grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the community of Polson and St. Andrews and their senior warden, Trinette Corman. We also pray for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, for Marty Stebbins, our bishop, and for our priests, deacons, and lay leaders at Holy Spirit and across the diocese, as we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We pray in Eastertide hope for all who are on our hearts, for our sick, and for those who cannot be with us. Today we pray especially for Frank, Anthony, and Benjamin Horton, Bert and Nora Horton, Joanne Chausse, Betty Rice, Laura Lambert and her family, Lori Dusty Bull and family, Ken and Nancy Haley, Jody Ulrig and family, Nancy Callan, Jerry Davis, Beth Franz, Marley Flanagan, Jeff McElwain, Keegan Yates, Tanya Lodel, Mary Lou Cordes, Laura and Cannon, Paula and family, 
Malcolm Smith, Aaron Evans, Lindsay Uticello and family, Peggy Tomlinson, Scott Turner, Joel, Jean, Cheyenne, Liza, Graham, Jim, Shannon, Peg, Peter, Sam, Charlie, Mo, Beth, and Benjamin. We pray for this week's interfaith gathering to honor the earth. We pray for peace in the Middle East. We pray for our neighbors who are sick, in prison, oppressed, addicted, suicidal, fearful, or without enough food, shelter, or sense of community. And in silence or aloud, we pray for other people or oppressions we lift to you now. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for all those lost to disease, destruction, or violence, and for any others you may wish to remember silently or aloud. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome those of you who are relatively new with us or new today. I'd like to invite you, notice the word invite. You do not have to do this. I invite you to stand and let us know who you are and just where you're from. That's one place of connection that we all seem to latch on to, gives us an opportunity to start that sharing. Are there any who would like to do that? Very well. We will continue with the announcements in the back of the bulletin. The first one is, I wanna say, uh, Kyle Fuxel, would you please wave your hand for those who don't know, this is our John Ellis intern. Uh, he is doing, uh, well, you teach over at the university, correct? and you continue to learn and he is helping us today so Nancy can have a chance to get away and be with a family reunion down in Texas. So thank you very much and thank you uh, Valerie for helping out too. All the clergy are going to gather at Camp Marshall this week starting Tuesday afternoon and finishing sometime uh, Thursday afternoon. It's the one opportunity we have to meet with the bishop and with one another all in one place without a screen in between us. 
So we enjoy that a great deal. Um, I wanted to let you know that this is the week that we begin co-rector sharing, Gretchen and I. It won't look quite like that this week because of clergy conference. But the schedule, just so you've heard it once, and you'll see it again in writing over time. I'm in the office Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning. Gretchen is here. Tuesday, where we overlap. Thursday, she's here by herself, just like when I'm here on Monday, okay? So you can see we're going to be trying to have some meetings and things like that. If you want us there, we have to try and work it within this schedule for now. We're trying to keep the schedule fairly well set because she's juggling another congregation and I may be at some point. It's just easier for everyone if we begin to see the pattern, okay? We will also flex as we need to if there's something on a Saturday we need to do so that we can make it happen. Our Sundays will be alternating for the most part, so Gretchen would be here next week in a normal pattern. We will also have, if I can remember it now, yes, we will be rotating each week so that there's always one of us on pastoral call for a week. Judy will know who that is when you call the parish office. Either she'll pick up or you'll be able to leave us a message and the person on call will check that. So if the individual can handle that call, they will. If they can't, they will call the other clergy person. They will perhaps call the lay uh, pastoral team. It just depends on where we are and what we're able to do. So just know we've thought it through. We have a pretty good plan. We're going to give it a roll and see how it goes. Okay? If you have difficulties, let us know. But um, we'll do the best we can. Okay? The first quarter giving statements have been put out. Check your email for those. We now have Holy Spirit t-shirts and sweatshirts. Bright red or gray. But they have the logo of the Episcopal Church. And uh, Holy Spirit, Missoula, on them. And they're pretty cool. You can sign up for one, to purchase one, in the parish hall. And I think Sue will be there today and next Sunday and the following Sunday, okay? So three Sundays, you can go for it. If you really want to get it to wear for the Pentecost service, you may want to order it today. <laughs> okay. Choir member hosts book signing on Monday, April 15th. That's tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Jeannie Warner, you want to come up to the microphone? Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jeannie Warner, and I've been a member, an alto member of the choir for over 25 years. I'm here to invite you to a book signing tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the Holy Spirit Guild Room. I'll be happy to try and answer any questions that may come up for you while you're reading the angel book. Um, Holy Spirit members have always been my extended family. So, it's only natural for you all to hear about my life that has been crushed and hidden in a back closet for years. Bring your own personal angels and we will compare notes and we'll have a good time, I promise. Thank you. For those who may not know, the guild room, the guild room is at the far end of our parish hall. Okay, down that direction. Okay. Centering prayer is April 16th. That's Tuesday. And Dorsey, why don't you go ahead and talk to the interfaith. Sure. I just wanted to lift up the interfaith gathering this Wednesday, uh, the 17th. Some of you may remember the Missoula Ministerial Association hosting a Thanksgiving service back uh, a few years ago. And um, with the COVID reset, we prayed about um, the best time to bring that back. And there was great energy around 
Earth Day and honoring the Earth. And so we have pulled together a great group who are um, bringing this service to life at 6.30 on Wednesday out at the, um, I need to get the name right, out at the Milltown State Park. So the obligation is bring your chair, bring your whole self, and uh, the worship will be about 45 to 50 minutes, and then there'll be some light hospitality afterwards. But we would love to have a great gathering with all our brothers and sisters across the community. Thank you. Next Sunday, there will be a Palestinian art sale here. And it comes to us because Reverend Gretchen's niece, who lives in Missoula, knows a, a dear friend over in Bethlehem who runs an art collective. And so she made this opportunity available to us and we wanted to make it available to you. So please read the information there for the kinds of things that will be present. Um, new book study begins in May, just a heads up. I'll give you more details in the future. Spring Market is just around the corner. Spring Market is one of our fundraisers and is an opportunity to kind of do that spring clean, but bring the things that are clean. Okay? You'll see their little notes in here about what to bring. So um, we need volunteers to assist, uh, moving furniture and things, moving uh, different kinds of clothing and different sorting and things like that. So you will see a list at the bottom of your page that talks about what is considered for this rummage sale. If you have any questions, do contact Marva Gallegos at the phone number there or her email, and she can also help you with that. And I see here that they're looking for jewelry as well. So if you have jewelry you haven't worn in a long time, they do amazing creative things with some of it, and they sell some of it just as is. So please take a look. Birthdays or anniversaries, do we have any that would like to uh, receive a blessing today? Very well. Let us bring offerings and come into God's courts with thanksgiving and praise.
we continue with a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us join together in the communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Join us next door in the parish hall for extended fellowship and love, and then let us go forth in the hopeful light of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.